In this video, we're going to be talking about color grading and log footage. And one big mistake I see a lot of editors make, which is not finishing color grading their footage. You'll see this a bunch in music videos, especially if it's an independent artist or just, you know, DIY stuff. And I don't blame it. It's a, it's, it, color grading can be a difficult task, especially when you are the director, the editor, everything all in one. Uh, it's a whole different science. But in this video, I want to explain kind of what's going on. So what I have open is just some sample log footage. You've probably heard this term before, log footage. Uh, I just found some free so Sony sample footage online. So credit to directed by Sergio for shooting this. What you'll see in log footage is this gray, this gray look. You, you've probably recognized this. In fact, it's almost become conflated with a trendy, like faded Instagram look too. But the two are kind of two different things because in, in the Lumetri Color panel in Premiere Pro, uh, you do have the creative ability to add that faded film slider, which kind of lifts the black point, makes it a bit more gray. And you also have the ability to lift the black point in the basic correction, correction section, which again, that can be an aesthetic choice to get that more faded look. But I think a lot of people can mix the two up because log footage naturally comes out in this more grayish tone and the reason for that is because it's shot in this way to create to capture more data and information and colors such as not overblowing the highlights or shadows uh, and to explain this really quickly log comes from the word logarithm so if i have this graph here open i'm not going to explain the whole uh, mathematical reasoning behind it but if you're if you're solving for a log function which is related to exponentials um, which is like an equation like this basically as you go up for x this is what the chart would look like it'll it'll start out slow it'll quickly rise and it'll slowly curve like this and when you're talking about curves like a log curve there's a whole section in Lumetri color panel called curves and this is a linear curve just goes straight from this point to that point this is the default curve and i have tutorials all about how curves work and how every single one of these sliders in the lumetri color panel works from basic correction to color grading but essentially this curve is its own graph plotting the shadows and the highlights so on the left we have the point at the most bottom left point that is like true black. And on the top right, we have the point at the brightest most point that is like true white. So if I was to take the top right most point, take it down to 50%, it'll basically make the white turn into 50% gray. And if I was to take the shadows, bring that up to 50%, it would also make that turn to 50% gray. So a straight line, is just gray. A com a flipped line would be inverted, and this is just working on all color channels. But if you were to take a straight line like this and pull down in the shadows, you'll see the shadows will get darker. If you push up the highlights, you'll see the highlights will get stronger. And essentially creating a little curve like this creates a little contrast back into the image. So the whole reason people shoot flat or log footage is that so it doesn't come out of the camera already looking contrasted like this, which is nothing wrong with shooting in a regular color profile. If your camera doesn't have log or flat options, there's nothing wrong with just making it come out of the camera with good colors, you know, nothing wrong with that. But I think where, where people get mixed up is they hear everyone talk about how shooting raw and shooting log is, is always better because it does give you more information if I did want to go back and if I, you know, didn't want the shadows to be blown out or the highlights to be blown out and I wanted more influence once I go back and color grade. But the problem I think is people shoot log, they get, they, they but then they don't actually color grade it, which is the whole point. Or they color grade it, but they don't know how to bring the contrast all the way back in. So there's this whole section in the basic correction with some input LUTs. LUTs just stand for lookup tables, which is also just kind of like a, a preset, make this color point turn into this color point thing. 
But you know, if you use a LUT, there's specific ones for different cameras. There isn't really a Sony LUT loaded in here, but I'm sure you can download or make your own. But you don't have to worry too much about that. You see what these are doing is just basically bringing the contrast back into that flat image. And this is how it more close to how it should look. I mean, this in this case, it's still kind of too dark here. That's where you can go and adjust the shadows. Or if you don't even want to use an input LUT, you can just do it by hand. So I can pull that contrast back into the shadows until I get the black point more how it should be. I can maybe pull that contrast back into the highlights. So it's not always going to look the same for each clip, but I can move a lot of these points around. I can even just take the whole black point and push it to the right. So you can see just a little bit of bringing that contrast back in makes it look a lot more boosted in color. And then you can also, in the basic correction, boost up the contrast, maybe play around with the exposure. And you can see here, I want to balance not blowing out the highlights versus keeping the texture in the shadows. So that's, that's why shooting log might have been useful, so that I still have the texture and the data and the pixels there, but I can go back and maybe boost up the shadows a little bit, maybe lower the highlights, maybe boost up the overall contrast and exposure a bit. And then if you did want to still have that kind of faded look, you can do it the proper way by just adding that faded film look or pushing the black point up, or even in the curve section, same thing, you can push the black point up by just making the black point instead of being at true bottom black, a little bit up, like five or 10% up. And then the fun part is actually adding the color. So once you bring the basic contrast back to where you want it, maybe even boost up the saturation a little, the fun part is adding the color. So of course we all know LUTs, um, there's a bunch of cool different LUTs you can find, make, make stuff cool, um, darker, warmer. When I say cool, I mean more blue, uh, greenish LUTs. Uh, I sell my own LUTs on my website, but obviously you don't always need LUTs. Like this looks pretty cool, green cross-process look. I've made these by hand, but what you can do is simply go into the curve section and you can go into different color channels and for example, if I pull some green into the highlights, I can push it to be more green. I can pull some red in or out of the highlights. I can pull red in or out of the midtones. So basic color theory, red, green, and blue. That will allow you to make your own different kind of colors. Something warm and sunny like this, I'd honestly probably want something more warm and sunny. So maybe pull some blue out of the highlights, get that golden look. And you kind of get the hang of how this all plays together with experience. I know looking at the graph can be all difficult to understand what's going on, but you also understand what colors look good together. Like you don't want just a nasty blue like this, um, pulling all the red out, I mean, depends. Usually subtle is better and you can go back and, and keep adjusting the contrast in different ways. And this is kind of the art of coloring and color grading in general is this pushing and this balance back and forth of things. You see that there's a big difference here between this image and this image. So many times you'll see stuff go out with just this gray look or maybe this maybe with like 10 percent of this because people really haven't pulled all the contrast back into that flat footage that log footage and then colored it they've maybe just kind of it's more of a washed out color um, so there's nothing wrong with the washed out look and the, the problem the thing is too with these fancy cameras this footage still looks pretty good like it's sharp the, the, the camera quality is good, but it's not finished grading yet. So, so something like this has a lot more mood and feeling to it than something gray like this. Like the, the gray of the footage almost makes it blah. And, and I just happen to choose this golden brown color grade, but if you want to make it blue and cold or like an old memory, that's, that's the thing with color grading. You can decide the mood that you want. And there's all different other type of tools 
beyond just curves. I can I can even use the shadows, slider, um, highlights, midtone shadows. There's different ways to color grade. You don't have to use them all at once, but there's just different tools for you. Just keep it subtle. Bring the contrast back in. Finish color grading your videos, and don't put some really disgusting strong grade on it if it's not what the video calls for. So my name is Justin Odisho. If you enjoyed this video and you want to dive more into these tools, I have full videos specifically going over every single slider in the basic correction and creative and all the Lumetri color panels. That's how to color correct and the basics of how to color grade on my channel. I have playlists going over a lot of other stuff with color grading. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you in the next video.